Hi, I'm Trevor Lund of RevTrev.com, and uh, today I'm going to be reviewing uh, a series of books that I've read. And I'm not through the series yet, but it's probably a series I want to read all of them through, actually. And the series is by Jack White. Now, Jack White is an author that I've been following for some time, uh, just because he's Canadian. Well, <clears throat> actually, you know, he was born in Scotland, I think. Or, let me just make sure. We're... I don't know. I read in one of these books. He was born somewhere else. Came to Canada. But if you know anything about Canadians, it's if we have, uh, you do something good or you do something that's like inconsequential, you're still Canadian. We love you. Um, but if you do something bad, we put you back to your place of origin. <laughs> you know, the, <coughs> the absolute tragic uh, example of this is in, uh, I think, 88 uh, World Track. Uh, Olympics, 88 Olympics, Ben Johnson, uh, Canadian sprinter, Ben Johnson, wins the gold medal and is like, yay, Canadian, yay, Canada. And then, you know, two days later, he tests positive for steroids, and it's like Jamaican-born sprinter, Ben Johnson, and the CBC is down in Jamaica seeing how sh ashamed that they are of having a Jamaican-born runner because we don't want anything to do with them. Terrible, but uh, he is Canadian, and... Um, I've been seeing him uh, more and more of his books get re uh, re released, and uh, I've been wanting for some time to see what the book is about. Now, if I had any, there, there's a two two things about this book, um, and I'll give you the spoiler alert anyway. Like what this book does is is uh, it starts. Uh, I'm talking about Skystone. 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 Um, it starts, this is two generations before, two, three generations, three generations before Arthur. And uh, Jack White is trying to explain how Excalibur came to be, how uh, Merlin came to be, how, like all these different, all these different characters that we all know and love. And, and um, the one that I, I just wish didn't happen, and maybe it's just in this edition of the book, this is an older edition that I'm reading, but right on the back, uh, I didn't read the back. <laughs> I didn't read the back till I'm almost done the book. And I'm trying to figure out all these different things because I could see Arthurian themes coming through. And I'm like, oh, I wonder about this. I wonder about that. I wonder about this. And um, I was getting really excited discovering, you know, how on earth could this be? And it's, it, it, I really fell in love with the characters, really, really was, was cheering for them, wanted to see how, how all of this was going to come about. Then I read on the back and it says that it's the... Uh, the two men are Arthur's great-grandfathers, and their actions will shape a nation and forge a sword known as Excalibur. And it's like, oh man, if I would have read that, it, it just, it was bad copy on the back. Bad copy on the back. Now, <coughs> most of my listeners, you're, you're listening to me because I'm Rev Trev, and um, you, I need to give you this warning, okay? This is not a book I would want my daughter to read. Reason being, is it's quite graphic. It's graphic in content. That uh, means, what am I trying to say here? I'm a writer, and what I love about this book is that it does a very, very good job of explaining history. It doesn't go over the top too much. It's quite well-balanced in its approach. It, it, it This series brings in all sorts of uh, historical developments that I've often wondered: How on earth did did uh, they move? Like how? One example. I, well, I'll talk about that in the other book because that's when that happened. But it's graphic. It's 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 these are Romans and yeah, they're Christians and <laughs> you know they they felt bad about killing other Christians, but if they weren't Christian, you know they had to defend themselves and. And it's quite visual in, in what takes place. Also in, um, I'll say in this book, yeah, in Skystone, um, there are some descriptive sexual scenes as well. And, uh, you know, I don't want my daughter reading it. I'm old enough, I can skip them if I want to. They're not gratuitous, they're not over the top, they're not... It, it me it to me it's 
um, it kind of developed the characters and it showed why when something happened it was so important that it was made right and and these kind of things and it's it's not on the level of a harlequin uh, romance it's not on that kind of description level but it is graphic and so don't let your kids read it and don't if you pick it up and you start reading it because you say oh trevor lund recommended this and then you get to that part it's like what kind of trash is he recommending well I'll, I, I gave you the head up it's it's very it's it's very descriptive very gratuitous not gratuitous what's the word i was looking for uh, it's graphic. It's graphic. When people get killed, it, you see the flesh getting ripped apart. You see the bone breaking. You see these things going on, and it's, it's, uh, it's just graphic. Now, the reason why I've uh, fallen in love with the series and really like it, and I can't believe how long this is, is the historical accuracy. Um, when I say historical accuracy. <laughs> We don't have a lot of history for this point of time, but we do know that there were developments that took place between the time that Rome left Britain to the time that we get history back again. And somewhere in there, these developments happened. And and uh, he does a very, very good job of bringing these things to the forefront. Um, and I, I love the... Uh, I loved... I really enjoyed the... Um, just the attention to detail of, of how a Roman camp would be set up or how uh, the Romans would march or how, like, the, the all of these different things. It made very good sense to me, and uh, it got me into the whole series. Sky Stone, um, basically, it's a stone that falls from the sky, and they use it to make swords that are absolutely amazing. Well, a dagger was made by uh, uh, Varus's... Uh, grandfather father grandfather it made the uh, dagger from a sky stone and so they kept on looking for sky stones and what's a sky stone how why how can stones come from the sky because the only way a stone can come from the sky is if we catapult it up and it comes down right like there's nothing up there and it's just i love <laughs> oh and and oh and here's the other thing that really i i really appreciate about this book is that i think it it showed me what 300 years of british uh, of, of Roman occupation of, of England, of, of Britain, would, would actually look like. You know, when you really think about it, I live in a part of the world where it hasn't had civilization for more than 120 years. There, there hasn't been a town, there hasn't been a city, there hasn't been a permanent dwelling out here for, for more than 150 years. In Canada, uh, probably the oldest spot is Quebec City. It's 500 years old, I think. 1500s it was settled. Um, that's still good, right? Like 500 years. But uh, you, you, <laughs> my knowledge of, of British history was was after Rome left, after, <laughs> well after, that when history started coming back and, and we, we get an understanding of what's happened in Britain. And for it just hit me, 300 years, 300 years Rome was there. They had the roads, they had villas, they had all. My apologies to people in England. I'm just now awakening to your history, and I'm very, very impressed. Anyway, uh, with the warning of don't read the back cover first and beware for real, really graphic scenes, um, I do recommend the uh, Camelude Chronicles, starting with the Sky Zone. I'm Trevor Lund. Take care.